our next speaker is Julie Dixon. She's here from Georgetown University. She's the Deputy Director of Social Impact and Change at Georgetown. And we all know about social networks and the power of social networks for spreading ideas. And often when you spread an idea to the thousands of people you know, they may be located in your own city, your own state, or in another country. But when we share ideas, we're adapting and changing and sharing them in different ways. And there's real power in that. And that's what Julie studies for a living. So I'll let her tell you a bit more about social networks. Julie? I'd like to tell you a story about Lady Gaga. A couple of years ago, there was a singer-songwriter living in Washington, DC. Now, you probably have never heard of her unless you happen to be a fan of bad reality television shows on MTV. Her career was on its last legs. She had toured and recorded for seven years and again and again had come up against the barriers of the big time music industry. So, she gave up. On a whim, one night after work, she recorded a cover of a Lady Gaga song and posted it on YouTube. It was simple, low budget, recorded in her basement, just a piano and a microphone, one take mistakes and all. About a month after she posted it, something amazing happened. Lady Gaga herself watched the video and tweeted the link to her 11 million followers. In that instant, this unknown, semi-retired musician experienced what it feels like to go viral. And in one day, more people from around the world heard her music than in seven years of touring and recording combined. So this probably isn't what you expect an academic who studies the impact of technology on cause engagement to talk about. But you see, Lady Gaga actually taught me a very valuable lesson about the role of influence and just how much with the click of a mouse and without ever spending any money, one person can impact another person's life. And that's because, as you may have guessed, that singer-songwriter was me. Not everybody agrees with me that social media can or should be used to create a difference in this world. We've done a number of studies over the past few years that have examined how Americans use sites like Facebook and Twitter to impact cause. And I want to share some interesting statements from that research with you to see if you agree. The first is, I get too many emails and messages about causes today and nearly half of the American population agrees with this. The second is supporting global causes online doesn't really make much of a difference. And nearly a third agree with this. And finally, everybody likes causes on Facebook, but it doesn't really mean anything. And again, nearly half of the population agrees with this. So the question is, are they right? Does it really mean anything? I want to tell you another story right now. This is Xia. She's a 10-year-old girl who lives in rural China. Every morning, she walks to school after having two pieces of bread for breakfast. And during the day, she isn't provided with a lunch. Imagine for a moment how hungry you would be by the middle of the day. Would you be able to concentrate? Would you be able to remember anything that you're being taught? Well, a user on Weibo, which is a microblogging platform in China, similar to Twitter, decided to do something to help Shia and others like her. So he launched a grassroots campaign on Weibo and asked others to support school lunches for rural children. And because of him, Shia and 26 million of her peers now have lunch during the day. 26 million. Social media has truly disrupted and redefined the boundaries of traditional philanthropy as we know it. We typically think of giving to charities in terms of our wallets, but there's a new kind of very valuable currency today that you can't find in your wallet. It's your influence. Now, I want to pose a hypothetical question right now. What would you do if you came across a tweet that said, damn, I need a kidney? Would you ignore it? Maybe share it with some friends? Or would you take the time to go and get a blood test and see if you were a match? Well, a couple of years ago, a writer in Minnesota actually did put the call out for a new kidney on Twitter, and believe it or not, 19 people responded by getting tested, and one ended up being perfect match. And because of that, he was able to bypass 
a seven-year waiting process just by using his influence. But people are reluctant to embrace this idea that influence could be just as important as money when it comes to supporting causes today. We did a study over the summer and we asked Americans, what is the single most important resource that you can give to a cause today? And as you can see, fewer than one in six said influence. And here's where I see tremendous missed opportunity because embedded in one person's influence is a whole network of other people's time and money and talents and resources and skills just waiting to be activated. It's potential energy waiting to be transferred. But if you don't ask, all of that energy is wasted. This is Karen Klein. She's a 68-year-old bus monitor who lives not too far from where I grew up in upstate New York. Last spring, a group of seventh grade boys on Karen's bus created a video of themselves relentlessly bullying her. They tormented her about her weight, about how much money she makes, and about the fact that she did nothing but listen quietly to their insults, tears streaming down her face. They titled their creation, Making the Bus Monitor Cry, and they posted it to YouTube. Now, after the video went viral, a Canadian man saw it and wanted to do something to help Karen. So he created a campaign on Indiegogo, which is an online platform that lets people create and fund great new ideas. He set his original campaign goal at $5,000, thinking, if nothing else, it'll buy a nice vacation for Karen. Less than a month after it launched, 32,000 people from around the world had contributed more than $700,000 to his campaign. 32,000 people supported a woman who they've never met, who they likely will never meet. Social media allows us to feel and to empathize almost by proxy, even when the issues are far away from us. And because of that, stories like Karen's can have a happy ending. One that incidentally was very much unanticipated by the seventh grade boys who initially set out to use their influence in a much different way. So how can we effectively leverage this powerful new currency, our influence? You could create or join a crowdfunding campaign like the ones that supported Karen and Shia. Those of you watching today from China and from India and elsewhere around the world may be familiar with the online platforms that will allow you to do this. And as we heard earlier, new ones are being launched each and every day. How else could you do it? You could share a call to action on Twitter. You could create or share an online petition. You could share a blog post with friends. You could join a campaign on Facebook or share links to articles that educate people about the causes that you care about. There are as many ways as there are tools and new ones are being developed around the world each and every day. But it comes down to this. Regardless of the tool or the platform, you can share a compelling story, one that means something to you and you can ask people to act. I learned a very important lesson pretty early on in my fledgling music career, and I want to share it with all of you. You see, when I first started out, I played to a lot of empty rooms. Picture it for a moment, a big empty room with a bar and a bartender who's scowling because he's losing money by the minute, and a tiny stage in the corner and a young woman singing her heart out to the invisible crowd. Well, I like to think that the room wasn't empty because I wasn't good enough. What I learned is that people don't come unless you ask them to. And when they do come, it's because they care about you and because they want to support you and because you ask them to. It's not enough to create something beautiful and put it out into the world. And it's not enough to come up with an amazing idea or a campaign to change something. You have to ask people to care about it, you have to ask people to support it, and you have to ask people to act on it. And so that's what I'm doing here today. I'm asking you to not only think about this valuable new currency that you can't find in your wallets, I'm asking you to act on it. There are a lot of global causes today that are playing to empty rooms. Use your influence to get people to join you in supporting those causes and fill those rooms with people. Thank you.